Hey guys, uh, in today's video tutorial, I'm going to talk about a, a little JavaScript library called Require.js. Uh, I'm not. Um, I'm going to talk about basic why we need a Require.js and some example. Well, I will be coding basically. Mainly, we'll be coding, and at the same time, we'll be discussing and we'll talking about the why we need Require.js and how to write the modular code using Require.js. So uh, up to now. Here is I have my little application. Let me first show you what this application does. And after that, it's this application, till now, is not really written in AngularJS. It has some uh, C, uh, Bootstrap or CSS, and it has a jQuery mainly. My goal is to write, uh, start using you know Require.js and write the modular code. Right now, my code is kind of ugly. Um, I have this HTML file here. And I have and then I have this um, JavaScript file, and I'm using jQuery, and all the code, all the code to get the data and validation, everything is inside the one file, which is not really a good idea. So all the data comes from my um, here, and every all the validation, all the binding, everything is kind of like convoluted code. So let's see how we can use um, require.js to write modular code and have their one corresponding file. Okay, first thing first. Let's let me show you the application. So this one is this one is not really using require.js yet. So what this application does, for example, let's say I, I want to find out. You can type any letter here. As soon as you type something, for example. Um, if I type A, this is uh, based on the based on the name that has a letter A. It pull out all the record that has name A. These are basically data. These are different languages of the world. You know, maybe uh, Chinese, Italian, Spanish, whatever. And uh, if I type more character, it, it will filter further. For example, you know, it's pulling out the name that has A followed by J anywhere in the name for example it found the AJ here or, or, or AJ right here if I do um, oh it will pull out just one of them here see that's if uh, kind of like a filter okay and the data that is pulling out is coming out from like as I showed you earlier is from here I have this um, array of object it has a property called code to give a name it has a name and it has a native name, which is the native uh, how they write in their particular languages. And, and just uh, pulling those data out, these methods get called, and then so basically this loop here is responsible for. So so the, it's very simple loop. Um, my goal is to later on I will be writing instead of writing this loop, I can I could have used uh, underscore, you know, uh, but just for now that's how it is. And if the, I have a basic validation and basic data binding, right? Okay. That is what we have. But our goal is to try to use require.js and make our code more modular and more readable, and you know, more um, fr um, I don't know, more like, more follows the pattern called you know single responsibility principle, all those kind of things. Okay. To do that, what I have done, what I have just started. I create a new HTML file here. This HTML file is uh, contains exactly the same code, but slowly I will be, you know, getting this HTML portion of the code remains the same, but like JavaScript and other things can change. Okay, so um, very first thing since I said I'm going to use require.js, let's go ahead and add a reference to. Oh well, let's download the require.js into our project let's go and ask the NuGet package manager go ahead and find the required JS uh, come on find it
Okay, here, finally found it. <laughs> Sorry for that, it took a while. I don't know what happened. Okay, here's a required ZS library. I'm going to go ahead and install that into my solution, into, into my project. Looks like my network is really, really slow. Operation unable to connect to remote server. Okay, go ahead and try to install again. Oh, I don't know that time. It's, it's boom, it's fast. Okay, now as you can see inside the SQ folder, now we have a requires AS. It downloaded requires AS and it also downloaded R.js. So, next thing I'm gonna do into this file here. into this file here of course um I'm gonna say um very first thing I'm going to I'm gonna have a reference to uh require JS here. First thing you want I want I want you to do like it's gonna download the bootstrap and the require JS. And with the require JS, what else you can do? Um, well, even before that, let's see how the network looks like from the second file. This is with this page is without require JS, just plain vanilla JavaScript. Well, not really plain vanilla, as it has some jQuery in it. And this one is our goal is to use require JS. We can see, you know, um, should have loaded require JS now by going into. Um, Network tab here. First thing, it, as you as as it is listed here, it's downloaded the CSS file, in downloaded require JS, and after that, um, the jQuery, right? So instead of you know downloading, we can we, we can what we can do with the require JS, we can say hey, we have a dependency. Since with our project we have dependency to jQuery, we can say oh uh, you know, this is what we can do. We can say to um, we can basically specify the dependency here. We we'll do that by using something called data dot data dot main attribute. To this one, we're going to specify the path of our jQuery. In this case, this is our jQuery path. Okay, so this is this is how we start. Basically, we specify here. Is very first thing we are saying. Hey, you load the J. Once you load this one, there is this attribute, which basically says, "Go ahead and load the load the jQuery right here." That's what we need to to our application. Let's see that. And now I'm going to go ahead and get rid of that one. And let's see. Let's close, let's reload this guy here. Okay, let's try to see what's really going on here. Okay, very first thing, you know, we have our, this is our page, it made a request to our page, and our page has a dependency, well, it ha has a link to a bootstrap, it downloaded that, and then after that, it loaded the required JS. Okay, and it loaded requires JS. If you look at the initiator, it is very important. So after that, it loaded the jQuery. This time, jQuery is not loaded by our page, our application. It is loaded by this library, requires JS, which we can see from here. Look at the initiator tab, and it says it's loaded by requires JS. Okay. That is the first thing you have to do. Now, so instead of you know we manually are uh, loading up uh, it's loaded by our page this so now we can say that you know it's it's been loaded by this particular library that is a good thing now uh, next thing we want to do I'm gonna